Okay, so just keeping in mind, this is the uh, what we concluded with the last video. Uh, just all these symbols um, I will, will make sense of, of what they mean. We, we have four new symbols, greater than, less than, greater than, or equal to, less than, or equal to. Um, and we're going to graph these things to kind of make sense of what they mean. Um, so for number four, number three, not four, number three, um, x, this number x is greater than four. Okay, so we're going to create a number line like we have so many times as uh, younger children, people. Um, and here's four. And we know that x is this number that's it's definitely bigger than, than four. But what do we do when we get to four? Um, you know, as we consider these much larger numbers, like a thousand. Yes, definitely x could be a thousand because it's bigger than four. It could be a hundred because that's bigger than four. It could be ten. It could be five. But could it be four? Could it be equal to four? No. If it's equal to four, then it won't be greater than four. And that's what this says. Strictly, x needs to be greater than four. So we use an open circle to signify. Let x be all these numbers that are bigger than 4, but once you get to 4, then don't go exactly to 4. Okay, stop just before you get to 4. Um, x can't be that. Um, another quick example, 4. Uh, x is less than negative 1. Okay, so here is this number line, and I always just draw a double-sided arrow, and uh, then put the number right in the middle, and then there's negative 1. Um, so x needs to be less than negative 1. It could be negative 10 coming up to negative uh, 3 and so on. And But once you get to negative 1, it just don't get all the way to negative 1. So that's what the open circle means. So what would be the alternative? Um, let's look at number 9 real quick. Just as an example of the other symbol, this greater than or equal to. Could be equal to negative 3.5. x needs to be greater than or equal to negative 3.5. Okay, so if, you know, in a, in a job you may be given this uh, information that some number x needs to be greater than or equal to negative 3.5. Uh, and so just to make a little more sense of that, visually we'll draw a graph. Here's negative 3.5. And x just needs to be bigger than that. So way out here is good. Way, way out here is good. Uh, we're just shading all the places that uh, the, the numbers that x could be. We get to negative 3.5. Could it be negative 3.5? Yeah, it could be all the way down to uh, n exactly negative 3.5. So instead of a closed circle, we'll or an open circle, we'll close this circle and say it could be bigger than negative 3.5. And once you get to negative 3.5, that's also possible. So we put a closed circle to signify that. Now we are going to go um, with what's called a compound uh, inequality. We've got this number line, and I'm just going to draw the most important pieces of it. This is negative 3, uh, and this is 1. And now they, they have shaded it. They have closed this circle. They've shaded in between the two numbers and closed this circle. So what would the inequality be? <laughs> We could draw two inequalities. We, we could say that uh, x um, needs to be greater than or equal to negative 3. That's what this is saying. We could also say that x needs to be less than or possibly equal to neg or positive 1. Um, make sure that, yeah, positive 1. Um, or sorry, th not greater than, but less than. Let me erase that. x needs to be bigger than or equal to negative 3. But at the same time, as we go up past negative 3, we don't want to go too far. We want to stay down here less than 1 and possibly uh, equal to 1, but no further than that. Um, and what we could do here, since um, we, we have x kind of squished in between two values, we could make what's called a compound inequality, saying that x needs to be bigger than negative 3, or negative 3 needs to be less than or equal to x, and x needs to be less than or equal to 1. Okay, that's what's called compound inequality. Um, now let's do number 17, and just go the other way. Negative 3 needs to be less than x, 
and that x needs to be less than 4. So if we draw a number line, uh, here's negative 3, here's 4. Um, x needs to be bigger than negative 3. Okay, so as we just cruise along here, we don't want to go too far because 4 needs to stay less than, or x needs to stay less than 4. So, okay, so we, we're somewhere in here, that's good. What about right at negative 3? Do we include that? Is, is that a possibility? Can x be equal to negative 3? No, it can't. There's no equals here, so open circle for that. And also open circle for 4. Can't be exactly equal to 4 either. Okay. Um, now, let's see. Let's go on to, you know, in all of these we've been told, x is exactly this. It is... This is his exact relationship to another number, but um, where we want to solve inequalities is where we're told something about x and, and its relationship to some other number, but then like there's something else that's kind of getting in the way. So x plus 4 is greater than 10. Okay, so here's the thing about um, inequalities that um, everything else may have been really intuitive up until now, and, and now we, we kind of have to think uh, about how do we solve an inequality and, and does it make sense? The simple answer to that is you solve an inequality almost exactly the same way that you would solve an equation. Uh, you do the same thing to both sides, right? If you have a, a set of scales, okay, so we know that, that this side's heavier, okay, it's bigger, okay, so this side is x plus 4 and this side is 10, okay, and we're looking at this inequality. Um, and, you know, the symbol we would use here is, is greater than. This side's greater than that side. Um, if this were an equation, we would just subtract 4 from both sides. x would be equal to 6. Great. Um, but can we do the same thing with inequalities? Does the same, does, this is a truth. This is saying that x plus 4 is always going to be greater than 10. Um, so whatever goes in for x, this always needs to be bigger than 10. Okay, so if x plus 4 is bigger than 10... Then can we just subtract four from both sides? Well, sure. That if you if you think of a scales, if I take away four from here, if I also take away four from here, it'll this this bar here, this crossbar will stay at exactly the same angle. Not, like gravity will be having the same effect on uh, x and six as it does on x plus four and ten. So as long as we take away the exact same amount, do the exact same thing to both sides. So the short answer is just treat it like it was an equation. Don't do anything differently. Subtract 4 from both sides. x needs to be greater than 6. And that makes sense. If I want x plus 4 to be bigger than 10, then x needs to be bigger than 6. Um, if it gets to be, if it is 6, then it would be equal to 10. We don't want that. We don't have an equal sign. Um, if it's less than 6, it's definitely not going to work. It's going to be less than 10. So as long as x is bigger than 6, if it's 7 or 8 or 9, or even if it's 6.1, as long as it's bigger than 6, this side will be bigger than 10. And that's what we want to maintain. So if somebody tells you they want x plus a, a 4 to be bigger than 10, then you tell them, well, just make sure x is bigger than 6, and, and that'll always work out. Um, so do it just like an equation um, with an exception, and we'll talk about that exception in a second, but let's just do 26 as uh, another exercise. 11x, uh, what am I doing? 11 plus 8x. 11 plus 8x needs to be greater than or equal to 7. Um, so just like an equation, equation, subtract 11, 8x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Um, divide by 8 on both sides. Okay, so we, we kind of made sense of subtracting 11. What about dividing by 8? Um, if this side is, is bigger than that side, then dividing both sides by 8 should maintain the exact same uh, greatness. You know, this should be just as much bigger uh, than this as, uh, as 8 x is than negative 4, if that made any sense. So divide by 8 on both sides, just like an equation. x is greater than or equal to negative 1 half. Great. If x is greater than or equal to negative 1 half, then this thing here will be greater than or equal to 7. It'll maintain that relationship. Um, so 
Now let's look at 30. 30 contains the exception. Okay, there's just this one thing that if you do it, you need to remember there's something else that needs to be done. Um, okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna set us up for this to happen. Okay, for this exception to to need to to happen. So um, let's say that we need to get the x's together. So let's add eight x to both sides. And at the same time, let's since we're gonna have x's over here, let's get numbers over there. We'll subtract 19 from both sides. So negative uh, 14 is less than or equal to negative 2x. So what would we do if this is an equation to get x by itself? Divide by negative 2. And certainly you should do that. That's exactly the right thing to do. Uh, and so, but now think about this. If negative 2x needs to be greater than or equal to negative 14, but now we're dividing by a negative, so we are, are saying that this is going to be like the opposite sign now. It's going to be a positive x. Right? Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is positive x, and this side's going to be a positive 7. So if negative 2x needs to be greater than negative uh, 14, then that switches the relationship between these two sides. If, if we make these both opposites, then they're going to have the opposite relationship. Okay. So what that means is this sign flips over. If negative 2x needs to be greater than negative 14, then positive x needs to be less than positive 7. All right. Um, to hopefully uh, show this to you and, and make you feel a little better about it, um, this rule that if we, if we switch the signs, you know, if we divide by negative or also if we, if we multiply by negative, then we need to flip this uh, inequality sign around. Um, to show you that, that that definitely is true, I'll, I'll solve it in a way that you don't have to divide by a negative. Okay, So 5 minus 8x uh, is less than 19 minus 10x. Let's instead, let's add 10x to both sides. Because what that's going to do is now make the x's positive, and so there's no need to divide by a negative. And we'll subtract 5 on both sides. And so we have 2x is less than or equal to 14. And now divide by 2 on both sides. And x needs to be less than or equal to 7. You see? So um, whether it just you, you look at this and say, oh, of course, if you divide by negative, then, then you're switching the signs. And, and that makes sense. You would have to switch this uh, inequality symbol around. Uh, or whether just seeing this has shown you that it just needs to happen, uh, the, the rule is, let's, let's put like one of those caution things, attention. Um, if you multiply or divide by a negative flip the inequality symbol okay a lot of abbreviations there but if you multiply or divide by a negative which means you're switching the the sign of both sides both sides signs are going to become the opposite of what they were um, and so if you're gonna do that if you're gonna switch the the signs, the, the positive, positivity or negativity of both sides, then they're going to have the opposite relationship and you need to flip the inequality symbol. Okay. Um, and like I said, whether it's intuitively makes sense to you or you just recognize that it needs to happen, it does need to happen. Either way, if you multiply or divide by a negative, you need to flip that inequality symbol. Just flip it right over. Okay. Um, now, let's go to 37. Okay, and they're, they're qualifying these as and compound inequalities. I'll show you what that means. Negative 5 is less than x plus 1, which needs to be less than 4. All right, so 
the thing about these compound inequalities and solving them specifically is um, this is really two inequalities. There's two things that x plus 1 needs to be. It needs to be at the same time greater than negative 5 and less than 4. At the same time, negative 5 needs to be less than this, and this needs to be less than 4. So we're solving two inequalities here at the same time. Um, so the, the moral of the story is when I go to subtract 1 from here, I'm solving this inequality, but I'm also solving this inequality. Okay, so it's like this is an inequality here. Um, yeah, this is one inequality. That's one piece of information. And this is another. Why did I pick blue and purple? They're so close to each other. But there you go. Here's an inequality in the blue. Uh, and if we're going to solve it, we need to do the same thing to both sides. And if we're going to solve this inequality in purple, we need to do the same thing to both sides. So it's like there's quote unquote three sides to this thing and we need to do the same thing to each one so negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6 that needs to be less than x okay so x is by itself now and that's gonna be less than 3 okay no big deal um, we could physically split these apart and solve them uh, separately and then we could squish them back together into this but it, the result would be the same okay the reason it is that it's and is because if we uh, graph this as we are supposed to do um, this being negative 6 and this being 3 then x is going to be between these two so we could say that x is less or is greater than x is greater than negative 6 and it's less than 3 it's the two different things at the same time at the same time it is greater than negative 6 and less than 3 that's possible definitely you can have it be two different things at the same time the you know the, the alternative to that would be that it's not possible for that to happen um, like this x plus 1 is less than negative 3 or x minus 2 is greater than 0 this is I don't really understand you know why are we splitting them up like this let's solve for x and then graph them and I think you'll see why um, we'll subtract 1 from both sides, so x is less than negative 4, or uh, add 2 to both sides, x is greater than 2. Okay, so why are we saying or? It'll become really clear when we go to graph this. We put down negative 4 and 2, okay, um, and we go to... to shade in parts of this well x needs to be less than negative four okay well can i keep going past that and, and and put stuff here no that wouldn't be less than negative four uh and it goes up to but it does not include negative four so it's an open circle and then we go to this other thing uh x is greater than two uh okay so could could x be less than negative four and greater than 2? No, if it's less than 4, it's not bigger than 2. If it's bigger than 2, it's not less than 4. That's why it's or. It's either this or it's that. It can't be both. It's not possible for you to be less than negative 4 and bigger than 2 at the same time. Okay, so that's why it's called an or compound um, inequality as opposed to an and inequality because we could split this apart and say uh, negative 6 is less than x and x is less than 3 because it can be both those things at the same time whereas it can't over here. It can't be both of those at the same time. My computer is not happy. It's sleepy. And I woke it up. 52. A word problem. So you have a budgeted, budgeted $100 to improve your swimming over improve. Ah, yes. You're going to get better. You're going to practice and such. Uh, to improve your swimming over the summer at your local pool, it costs $50 to join the swim association and $5 for each swim class. Write and solve an inequality to find the possible number of swim classes that you can attend within your budget. Whew, okay. First, let's say, you know, how, how much is it going to cost somebody if they take uh, X number of classes? Okay, so you're going to take X classes. Um, well, no matter, even if you join and you don't take any classes, it's going to cost you $50 to, to join. 
On top of that, in addition to that, you're going to pay $5 times the number of classes that you take. That's going to be the amount you spend. Okay. So given an unlimited budget, you could spend a million dollars on this swim club. And I, I think once you spent a million dollars, you, you, you're wasting your money because you, you better be as good as you could possibly be after like a thousand dollars. So um, anyway, um, but you don't have an unlimited budget. You have a budget of a hundred dollars. Um, so this amount needs to stay under or less than or possibly it could be exactly equal to $100, if that's possible, to go exactly to $100. OK, so let's figure out how much x would have to be. How many classes could you take uh, so that you could spend a, right up to and including even $100? You could spend exactly $100, but um, you can't go past that. Um, so let's solve for x. We'll subtract 50 from both sides. And we'll drop those dollar signs here in the next one. So 5x, the, the, um, you know, the amount that you spend just on classes, this makes sense, needs to be less than or equal to $50 because you already spent $50 to join. So the rest of the 50 can be spent completely on classes, but it needs to stay under $50 or exactly equal to $50. Okay, so if we divide by 5, we're going to find how many classes we can take. So x, the number of classes that we can take, needs to stay under or perhaps be exactly equal to 10 classes. Um, yeah, I think you get that. So thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful.